Once again, welcome back to Billion Joy's Classroom. But before we proceed, please do not forget to click the subscribe button and notification bell to be notified for the latest video. For today's lesson, we are going to discuss about geometric mean. Basically, we define geometric mean as a terms between any two given terms of a given geometric sequence. The first and the last term of a geometric sequence are called the extreme. For example, let's say we have 2, 6, 18, 54, and 162. So geometric means on this given example are 6, 18, and 54. So therefore, the extremes are 2 and 162. To solve for the geometric mean, first, we need to find the common ratio. In our previous lesson, as we discussed in our geometric sequence, we find the common ratio by dividing a sub 2 divided by a sub 1, a sub 3 divided by a sub 2, a sub 4 divided by a sub 3, and so on, or simply dividing the succeeding term divided by the succeeding term. What if the given are non-consecutive terms? How do we able to find the common ratio? So in this case, we are going to use a formula that is the ratio formula. So ratio form formula is like this. R is equal to n minus k, which is our index, and radical sign, a sub n all over a sub k, wherein R is our common ratio, n, our number of terms, k is the position of a sub k, a sub n is our last term, and a sub k is our first term. Now, let's try for example, insert 3 geometric means between 3 and 768. So if we're going to insert 3 geometric means between 3 and 768, our ge geometric sequence is look like this. 3, the inserted 3 geometric mean, and then 768. So in our sequence, we have the given a sub n, is equal to 768 a sub k is equal to 3 k is equal to 1 n is equal to 5 so to solve for our common ratio we have r is equal to n minus k radical sign a sub n over a sub k substituting the value we have 5 minus 1 and the radical sign 768 all over 3. So first we are going to subtract 5 minus 1. So 5 minus 1 we have 4. Then we are going to look for the fourth root of the quotient 768 and 3. So in this case first we are going to divide 768 by 3 before we are going to get the fourth root. So 768 divided by 3, we have 256. And after that, we are going to find the fourth root of 256. So the fourth root of 256 is positive and negative 4. So if our common ratio is positive and negative 4, so therefore, if R is equal to positive 4, we have our sequence 3, then in our previous lesson, we get the next term by multiplying the preceding term by the common ratio. So multiplying 3 times 4, we get 12. 12 times 4, 
we have 48. 48 times 4, we have 192. Then 192 times 4, we have 768. If r is equal to negative 4, our common ratio is negative 4 multiplying by the preceding term, we have 3 times negative 4, negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 4, we have 48. Then 48 times negative 4, that is negative 162. 162 times negative 4, 768. So in our example, our geometric mean are 12, 48, 192. Then if R is negative 4, we have negative 12, 48, and 192. Let's try another one. Insert two geometric mean between 18 and 2 third. 18, then the insert two geometric mean in the last term, 2 thirds. So we have given a sub n is our last term, so that is 2 thirds. A sub k is equal to 18, k is equal to 1, n is equal to 4. So first, let us find the common ratio. We have the formula for the common ratio that is r is equal to n minus k and radical sign a sub n over a sub k. Let us substitute the value. So we have r is equal to 4 minus 1 which is our index and radical sign 2 third over 18. First, we're going to subtract 4 minus 1. So 4 minus 1 that is 3. So this time, we're going to find the cube root of 2 thirds over 18. But then, before we get the cube root, first, we're going to divide 2 thirds by 18. So in dividing 2 thirds by 18, we have 2 thirds divided by 18 over 1. In dividing fraction, we are going to get the reciprocal, the divisor, and then multiply the fraction. So it looks like this. 2 third times 1 over 18. And after that, we are going to multiply now the numerator and denominator. So we have 2 times 1, we have 2, then 3 times 18, that is 54. So therefore, we have 2 over 54. If we are going to look at our product, we can still reduce to its lowest term by dividing both numerator and denominator by 2. So we have 2 divided by 2, that is 1, and 54 divided by 2, that is 27. So therefore, 2 thirds divided by 18 is equal to 1 over 27. So we have r is equal to cube root of 1 over 27. Then we're going to get the cube root. So the cube root of 1 over 27 is 1 third. So therefore, our common ratio is 1 third. So let us get now our geometric mean. Then multiply 18 by 1 third, we get 6. Then 6 times 1 third, we have 2. 2 times 1 third, we have 2 thirds. Okay? Let's try. Okay, let's try another one. For example, insert geometric mean between 2 and 18. So if you notice, in our next example, we don't have or it was not specified on how many geometric mean we're going to insert. So therefore, we're just going to insert one geometric mean. So we have mean proportional. So mean proportional if only one missing term between two terms. So we have the formula that is geometric mean is equal to the square root of a times b. Our given sequence 2 and then the missing mean n18. So given we have a sub n is our 18, a sub 1 is equal to 2, then the missing term that is a sub 2 which is our geometric mean. So geometric mean is equal to the square root of a sub n times a sub 1. 
Substituting the value, we have a sub 2 is equal to the square root of 18 times 2. So 18 times 2, we have 36. Then, get the square root of 36, so therefore our geometric mean is positive and negative 6. Okay? So we have now our sequence 2, 6, 18, and 2, negative 6, and 18. So now let us try this one. Insert geometric mean between 4 and 100. So this is an example of mean proportional. Okay? So if your answer is 20, you are correct. How about this? Insert geometric means between 3 and 243. Or insert 3 geometric means between 3 and 243. Select R. The numbers between 3 and 243. So if your answer is 9, 27, 81, you're right. Let's try another one. Insert geometric mean in the geometric sequence 2, 8, and then the missing term 128. So what do you think is that missing term? So this is an example of a mean proportional. Okay? So what do you think? Your answer is 32. All right. How about this? Insert geometric mean between 12 and 300. Another example of mean proportion. Your answer is 60. You are correct. Last one. Insert geometric mean between 900 and 225. What do you think is the geometric mean between 900 and 225? If your answer is 450, you are correct. So that's all for today. See you next time.